Hello everybody and welcome back to Cheap Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. We're down here in the Garden of Eating. And uh, Andy has left this morning, so he's gone. I'll show you a picture of all the gold he found in two days. And let me see. <coughs> sneeze, excuse me. Anyway, I'm down here looking at some of the stuff that I watered everything really good for the last couple of days, soaked them all down. Got some real good growth coming out of them. That's my, uh, my non-king cherry tree right there, and it's really uh, tripled in size, so it, it's doing good. That's a, a volunteer peach tree. Uh, this, of course, is my fig tree. And this is uh, another peach tree, but it's going out of season, so the uh, leaves have all fallen off, like some of the other peach trees I have. So anyway, the peppers, though, are confused. The weather has cooled down quite a bit, and they think it's springtime. So I've noticed that some of these have uh, flowers on them already. So I might still get some peppers out of them. As we get down right in here, you can see there's some buds right there getting ready to open up. So yeah, there, you never know. I think it was uh, basically all the heat and the uh, stress from the heat waves going on for like uh, two and a half months and uh, to totally dry no rain uh, who knows anyway uh, this is one of my uh, graft branches right here from the bosque pear tree and you see where I did a bark graft here in the side of the main trunk and uh, that one has taken and it's healed pretty well and it's growing really well so we'll see what happens with that one next year uh, some of the other grafts on that tree didn't take, but uh, I'm glad at least one of them did. And over here, this guy, this guy took, but uh, it's at that time of the year where it's starting to drop all its leaves. So I'll we'll have to wait until next year to see what happens. And uh, yeah, that, that graft looks like it took too, so we'll be doing pretty good on that one. None of the grafts I put on this uh, um, early Alberta peach tree, which that tree I showed you down there, that's uh, an offspring from this one, a volunteer offspring. None of the uh, peaches, um, uh, the grafts I did on this took. So I'll attempt some new ones come springtime and see what I get out of that. And uh, like I said, I picked all of the peaches off of that already and ate them. And, uh, uh, no, didn't do any apple, peaches, pumpkin pie, or any of that. But this pear tree is kind of confused, too. It's, uh, it's looking like, um, it's trying to sprout for spring here. And this graft took right there. And these are my apple grafts over here. This is a Fuji apple graft on my pear tree from Andy. And this is a um gala apple or i call it a sharon apple because it came from sharon's apple tree and that one took also so i got two good grafts coming on this pear tree we'll see how that works out come next year and you saw how sad my little tangerine tree looked well it's coming back it uh, just needed water and of course me limping around not being able to get a lot done out here uh, i neglected my garden so I got some uh, tomatoes here that have sh started showing some new buds and flowers on them. I don't think they're going to do anything. It's too late in the year, but I'll give them a chance. Basil's going to seed. And uh, this uh, grapevine and that grapevine over there both have new growth on them, thinking it's springtime. <laughs> the, uh, the weather cooled down, but now it's springtime weather. So who knows? And I'll prune this tree back. I'll take all the dead stock off of it and uh, feed it some good nutrients and some uh, hydrogen peroxide and I'll see if I can't get that one back to life. And this one, the uh, that one big graft I did on here did take well. So that's uh, this group right here. So you can see how nice and lush and green it is. 
and uh, that one over there I'm gonna prune the dead wood out of it and uh, see what we can get for growth out of next year but I got to clean my greenhouse out get all of these plants moved in there before it gets uh, too late in the fall and here's my um, tangelo tree from seed and as you can see it's growing up it's becoming a teenager and of course this is all uh, catnip and these apple trees over here with my multiple apple grafts on them um, all the grafts seem to be doing really well on here and uh, I got one bud graft right there that broke through the tape and you can see the bud on it right there so yeah I think that bud graft took so I might have five apples on that tree and uh, four on this one over here we'll see what happens oh wait a minute looks like well maybe no that bud graft didn't take so anyway it looks like something's been getting in here and eating on my leaves but to find out what that was all right so we got that all done let me uh, get out of here the reason i actually came down here was not to do a video on this um, those shade trees over there i grew those from seed but uh the reason I came down here was because I just looked down here from up by the cabin and it looked like there was a bird stuck inside of here. And you say, well, how can a bird get in there when it's completely enclosed? Well, remember, I did um, add on the greenhouse and because of the high winds, and I'll tell you about those in a minute, I open up the uh, top vents of the greenhouse and the doors of the greenhouse to equalize pressure so it doesn't blow apart like it did last year. As uh, you see the vent lids are open, well a bird will land right on the edge of that and say oh look I can go inside of here and they get inside so by next year I'll probably have um, screens over those on the inside so they can't do that anymore. So anyway, um, I was talking about the winds. Well, yesterday, um, as we were finishing up, the winds really, well, they were blowing all day, but uh, they weren't that bad, you know, uh, 15, 16 miles an hour, something like that, nothing really bad. And then by supper time, they were 33 miles per hour. And that was a little bit too much. So Andy knocked off his, uh, his gold panning and I was out here doing um, chores all day and I overstressed my ankle that was healing really well and uh, now I've got a little pain just in the ankle bone on the inside ankle bone so I've got that wrapped with uh, an ace bandage and uh, letting it uh, relax I'm, that's why I'm moving so slow here so anyway uh let me show you oh this morning temperatures we both closed windows last night the temps got really down last night it was it woke up this morning uh, around 6 6 30 uh it was 54 degrees out that's 5 4 degrees fahrenheit and that was a little bit chilly but uh, now we're going back up into the warm-up so it hit 90 today anyway let me look down here this picture is a picture of what andy had panned out of my stream bed in two days and that's andy's first gold but you can see there's a lot of black sand in here and some of it looks like it's bonded to the gold you can see it over here too so i showed you all that black sand that my uh, rolling magnet picked up just going in like a little 10-foot circle here this place is really really mineralized with a lot of black sand and uh, I find well I find rocks like these the quartz all over the place and when I see them like this with the uh, different runs and veins through them and different types of rock attached to them I'll actually t put those in my crusher and then pan them out and see if I get anything out of those but uh, that's another story anyway um, that's about all I really have for today I got a lot of 
things I gotta get done, but I don't wanna press my luck on my ankle. So I might have to take a day or two off here and, and just relax. Although, because the temperatures are starting to drop now, I'm thinking I really need to get uh, Tomcat's condo winterized. That's what, that's what you're seeing right over the top of this tote back there. And uh, I already put the, uh, the front door panel on the second part of the coupe on the other side so that uh, blocks the wind. And I slid a piece of plywood in there so he's a little more comfortable at night without the winds gusting through his condo. And I have windows on there that can open up. If, if it gets hot again, I'll just open those windows up and let the air flow through so that he doesn't get too hot. But uh, he's been doing really well. And he's still out doing his thing right now. And uh, I've seen him every night and every morning. He comes around and lays in his favorite places. Or in the morning he gets up. He likes coming over here between that tote and the van. It's a little shady spot. And he watches under the van in case any um, rodents try to climb up there and chew my wires. He's on guard duty. He's doing a good job of that too. Okay, so last, before I close off here, Andy brought this stuff back on the wagon yesterday after he was all done. And this was still full of water. So I dumped the water out. And I noticed down in here, there was a lot of black sand still left. Well, in the last batch that he was panning out, he forgot to put the... Um, uh, the water treatment in there that makes the water wetter which is uh we use finish for you you know what you use like jet dry for your um dishwasher i use finish and I just add maybe an ounce to this tub when i'm uh, ready to pan and that makes the water wetter and makes panning a little easier well he forgot to do that and he said when he was washing his pan out he saw some gold flakes run off the edge and drop back into this water so I carefully ran the water off yesterday, and I'll pan the rest of this out. And there's a few places, uh, looks like got some sand down in here too. There's a few places over there that he didn't really um, get to, because he he did hit, where I dug up that caliche, those big chunks of caliche, that's where he was getting his big hits. So he was gonna go dig some more out of the holes, and I said, well, look at this big old chunk of caliche I showed in the video. Um, why don't you go ahead and break this up, soften it in the water, break it all up, and pan this out. Well, he did. And he did a really nice job. And that's how the uh, his little vial there that I showed you the picture of just a second ago got so full. Of course, you got to remember, he didn't get rich. It's really hard getting rich on little... Uh, finds like that small um, specks of gold you spend a lot of time picking those out with tweezers after you've panned them and got them to uh, come off the edge of the uh, stuff you're panning you pick them out with tweezers and add them to your vial and uh, he spent two days to get that little vial worth over there and uh, he says he's got about ten dollars worth I don't think it's that much but think about that. You're gonna work 16 hours, 17 hours, 18 hours for under $10. That's a lot of work. But, like I said, it's gold fever. You gotta get your first gold in your life. And uh, I knew there was gold in that stream because when I was digging that pond and we had that big floods come down, I watched the water really rushing down that stream bed coming from the gold mines that are up there in the mountains it was really rushing down but it started swirling and it had no place to go so the gold had to settle out in the bottom of that pond bed so that was my thoughts and I was correct so I'll go over there tomorrow and pan out the rest of the stuff that he missed and see if I can't pick up a little bit in my vial I'm a little bit more experienced at it than he is. Uh, like I said, that's his first gold. But he's getting really good. He's getting much better. All right, everybody. That's all I really have. Um, my uh, turbine was cranking out electricity yesterday. 
that I didn't really need because the sun was on my panels. Anyway, that's all there is. This is G Bear reminding you thumbs ups down there and subscribe down there and share down there. Thanks for joining me. This is G Bear signing off.